Mr. Cyril Joel, welcome to Shalom World Interview. We are glad that you are here with us, especially when we are celebrating the 15th Jubilee of uh, International Catholic Charismatic Renewal Services. Cyril Jan was born in Kerala, India in 1957. The key roles he has held in India and abroad include Chairman of the Delhi Archdiocesan Service Committee, Coordinator of the National Intercession Network in India, Chairman of National Service Committee, Chairman of International Catholic Charismatic Renewal Service Subcommittee for Asia Oceania, and Vice President of the ICCRS Council. Cyril is blessed with a special calling to the Ministry of Intercession. As the first coordinator of the National Intercession Network in India, he helped establish the network with more than 10,000 committed intercessors and regional intercession units across the country. Cyril serves in the Indian Parliament, Lok Sabha Secretariat, as Joint Secretary. Can you start by sharing your conversion experience with us? I was a normal Catholic, uh, I would say a Sunday-going Catholic. It was in 1982, uh, actually, that I participated in a retreat. Uh, of course, that really touched me, but, uh, you know, I didn't become part of the renewal. Uh, after that, I continued um, the same way. But it was later, in 1993, that I attended a retreat. Uh, and there was a prophetic word that really transformed my life. And uh, that was um, during the retreat as the counselor was praying over me. Uh, she said that she has a vision of the capital city of India, that is New Delhi, where I live. And the Lord is asking me to renew, to rebuild uh, the city spiritually, which I did not understand because I was in no way involved in the renewal in a big way. I was just a member of a prayer group by that time. And then what was the Lord asking me and in what capacity would I do that was not clear. But uh, the Lord led me later into doing uh, great things for him. So when you heard that prophetic word, the prophecy, what was your first emotion, the response? Were you taken aback? Were you delighted, excited? Yeah, in a way, I was take, taken aback because I didn't understand what the Lord meant because there was no possibility of me taking any leading role because I was just a member of the prayer group. I would go for the prayer meeting and come back. There was no involvement in leadership. Uh, but I think that prophetic word gave me such a powerful anointing because when I finished my retreat, it was the experience was like I was floating, you know, um, yeah. such a uh, powerful anointing that I received that it turned my world upside down. You know, the priority became the Lord. And uh, then I started my prayer life, a very committed prayer life, personal prayer, reading the word of God, and then going to the prayer meeting on a regular basis. So th that changed my lifestyle in a big way. Yes. So that leads to our next question, which is um, change of lifestyle. So many people uh, have a misconception or are afraid to enter into a devoted, Catholic, uh, devoted faith because they think they have to make a lot of sacrifices in their life. They have to turn away all the entertainment and the pleasures in their life, especially the quality time with the family will be lost. Uh, and uh, they wouldn't find life as enjoyable as they can, which is not always right. So, based on your experience, how can you correct those people? I would like to say that the charismatic spirituality is a normal spirituality. It's a normal Christian life that we live. It's a wrong concept to think that when you become part of the renewal, it's like a kind of a life of a hermit. It's not so. I have been uh, working with the government. I was with the Parliament of India 
I was traveling a lot. I was traveling with uh, politicians. I was attending international conferences, staying in five-star hotels, all that. But definitely, as you said, you need to draw a line. You know, you need to, uh, uh, you know, sacrifice certain things. But it doesn't mean that you live an abnormal life. We can always lead a normal life. Um, to share with you, you know, for me, my family life has been as normal as before. I used to spend time with them. I used to take my children and my wife out, even sometimes for a dinner. There have been times when my children would say, uh, Papa, can we watch a movie? No, I used to uh, set aside some time when the children demanded for that. Because sometimes people used to ask me, oh, you are in the charismatic renewal, you may not be watching movies. No. Uh, I think we need to spend time with the family, also our commitments in the office. But at the same time, I was clear as a disciple of the Lord, what I should do and what I shouldn't do. I always had my prayer life, regular prayer life, my reading of the Word of God, uh, attending the Mass, the quality time with the Lord, and at the same time with the family, and also giving equal priority to my life, in the office, in the secular world. So one need not have such apprehensions. Being a charismatic doesn't mean that all the time you say, hallelujah, praise the Lord, you begin every conversation with that. No, it's not so. Um, there are times when um, I have been um, traveling for international conferences and things like that, where I am an official of the government. But at the same time, yes, I have my, uh, my personal uh, life, as a disciple of the Lord, my, uh, my personal holiness, uh, my prayer life, everything, that commitment continues. But the apprehension has to be removed because it's simple, normal Christian life. Of course, uh, we have a call to holiness. We have a, a, a call to grow deeper in our spiritual life. All that continues. But the apprehensions need to be set aside. And in fact, we welcome everyone, everyone uh, who wants to be part of the renewal. You always talk uh, with great significance about intercessory prayers. Can you tell a bit um, more about these intercessory prayers and different forms of intercessory prayers? Now, St. Paul sets priority to intercession. Now, 1, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. St. Paul says, first of all, Pray for everyone, and especially those in authority. So all of us are called to be intercessors. Now, intercession is a topic that the Lord called me to be deeply involved. It was in 1993 that I attended a program. And when I came back to my city, I organized a seminar on intercession. And then right from that time, the Lord has been using me very powerfully in the ministry of intercession. I have a lot of experiences. Now, I realized that in the Catholic Church, we do not have good teachings on intercession. So that uh, inspired me to write down, you know, write um, on intercession. And this was brought out in the form of a book by the International Council, the Icarus Council in 2012. Now, this book received a lot of acceptance because it has been now translated into 13 languages. One of the concepts that I have developed in the book is prophetic intercession. People think it is new. It's not new, actually. You know, you find prophetic intercession right in the book of Genesis. With Abraham. Abraham was called by the Lord. The Lord spoke to him and said, I am about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, the Lord wanted Abraham to intervene, to intercede for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we find the, the father of faith interceding. Now, that was prophetic intercession. When we say prophetic intercession, it's an intercession where you focus on what is moving in the heart of God. We say Jesus is the intercessor. Is the intercessor par excellence. And every moment there is something moving in the heart of Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
he is worried about something that is going to happen, maybe a cyclone, maybe an earthquake, maybe a tsunami, maybe a tragedy, maybe a nation is going to be punished for, for their, their uh, misdeeds and sins. So the Lord, who although is a just God, is also a merciful and compassionate God. And the Lord is wanting to intervene. The Lord is interceding and the Lord wants to partner with us. So looking for partners, that is what we see in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 3. I searched for someone to build a wall and to stand in the breach, and I found no one. So the concept of prophetic intercession is based on two things. One is that the Lord is always searching for someone to partner with him. So if I'm an intercessor who is open and willing and available, then the Lord will definitely give me the message, maybe in the form of a prophecy, maybe in the form of an inspiration, maybe in the form of a vision. And there are many people who have experienced this. Now, the second is that we do prophetic intercession in the power of the Holy Spirit. So we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us in our intercession. Now, if we have the intention revealed by the Lord, then we also ask the Holy Spirit to guide us in our prophetic intercession. You know, as we progress, the Lord into us. The Holy Spirit inspires us. Intercede like this. Humble yourself and intercede. Kneel down and intercede. Prostrate and intercede. Walk around the city and intercede. So many people, many people have been experiencing this. Uh, and there is also a tremendous acceptance of this new form of prayer which, which has been developed. Because I am being invited now from many parts of the world. Uh, you know, in January 2000. 17, I conducted a workshop in Brazil. 4,000 people were there. 4,000 people uh, who were interested in prophetic intercession. And then um, there are many more invitations which are coming in. So what I find is this form of intercession has a lot of keen interest and it is helping people to grow, not only in the ministry of intercession, but in their spiritual life and also in the use of charisms. So people who want to become powerful intercessor, uh, what are the things they should know? Um, is it a combination of the work of the Holy Spirit and their dedicated effort, uh, constant praying in the Spirit that, becomes, that makes them a powerful intercessor? Yeah, actually, you know, intercession is like swimming. You know, I can't teach intercession in a classroom, just like you can't teach swimming in a classroom. Now in intercession, we give the teachings. Whenever we have these teachings, I also follow it up with workshop. In fact, the, the training that has been devised by me for ICRES Council is for six days. Six days speaking on intercession. So people ask, what are you speaking for six days on intercession? So we give teachings and then we follow it up with workshop. So actually we need to get into intercession. And as we begin this form of prayer, we grow deeper and deeper. And I also say that, you know, just like you go to the nursery class in the school, and then you need go to class one, class two, class three. So there is also a process of growth in intercession. You begin with Normally the intercession begins with writing down the intentions in your diary with a date of receipt of the, the request. And then you take it to the Lord for prayer. But in prophetic intercession, what we believe is, uh, it's not so much you writing down, you taking a blank notebook to the Lord, asking the Lord, Lord, now tell us what we should intercede. And then as you grow, as you, as you uh, spend more time in intercession, you find the Lord really guiding. Is charismatic renewal movement doing enough to keep the, this awareness of uh, importance of the intercessory prayer through their activities? I feel the renewal has made a big contribution to the church in this area because intercession is part of the tradition of the church. It's nothing new. You take the Eucharistic prayer. How much of intercession is there? On Sundays and feast days, we have the prayer of the faithful. 
And you know that there have been consecrations in the church which was established only for prayer. Cloistered Carmelites. So they pray for the church, they pray for the world. So it is part of the tradition of the church. Now, what had happened is that the common man doesn't feel that he is called to intercede. So the renewal has helped in placing intercession in the right perspective. So today, the renewal is promoting the intercession in a big way. But at the same time, I would say, many people in the renewal still feel that intercession is not their cup of tea. That it is meant only for a small group of people who are intercessors. But that is not what St. Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 2. That he says, for everyone, every believer is to pray. So, especially those who are in the ministry, those who are in leadership, those who are in evangelization, those who are in proclamation, those who are in the praise and worship ministry. So everyone is supposed to be intercessor. Now, intercede for the ones you are going to minister. If you are a prayer group leader, intercede for your group. Only then the group will grow. So it is, I would say, if the church has many ministries, the church is like an umbrella. And the stem of the umbrella is intercession. So without the stem, the umbrella cannot stand. So that is, it is so very important. And the renewal is doing a great job. But I feel they should do more so that there is a greater awareness of the importance and the urgency of intercession. You mentioned about um, conducting workshops in various parts of the world. So you must have traveled around the world uh, attending uh, seminars or arranging seminars, giving talks. Have you seen enough fruits through all those events? Because it is happening quite a lot around the world now. Can you quote a couple of examples uh, which shows there are fruits coming out of these good events that have been organized by Charismatic Renewal? I would say the Charismatic Renewal is bearing a lot of fruit. A lot of fruit because the quality of life of the people has changed. I can uh, show you a number of parishes, dioceses, where the church today is vibrant because of the renewal. In the United States, there is a parish, which is charismatic parish. It has been, it has been erected with the understanding, clear understanding, it will be a charismatic parish. And they begin the mass with praise and worship. It's a normal Sunday mass. So the, the quality of life has changed in the lives of individuals, the lives of parishes. I know a lot of parishes where the committed faithful, those who are in the parish council, those who teach catechism, those who lead adoration, they are all members of the renewal. Members who are formed, who have the commitment and also the quality. You know. So today, in a big way, the renewal has made the church salty. Because the renewal is like salt. Now salt gets merged with the life of the church. So it has made the church salty. It has made the church vibrant. And we also see there are a lot of ministries that have come up. A lot of communities, ministries, initiatives, social action, media, evangelization. So all this have come up by people who received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Maybe they are no more, you know, directly under the umbrella of the renewal. But these are all offshoots of the renewal. Now all these people were actually inspired through the Holy Spirit. You mentioned about the significance of charismatic movement in the church and how it's bearing fruits. How would you convince a non-charismatic person about the significance of charismatic movement in the church? I would say, you know, the renewal is meant for the whole church. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, insisted on this during his message at the Pentecost Vigil, that the renewal is meant for the whole church. Mm -hmm. Actually, 
the renewal helps us to renew our life see the two important aspects of renewal is one is the experience of a god experience deep god experience the second is to grow in holiness so in the god experience we have an anointing of the holy spirit that the graces of baptism and confirmation these are the two basics of the renewal itself which is meant for every christian so every christian is a baptized christian he has received the confirmation so in the renewal what we do is those graces which have remained dormant within us after we receive the sacraments these are in a way you know stirred into flame that is what st paul used that terminology these are stirred into flame these are made active but what has remained dormant so this is a grace meant for everyone it's not meant for a few people so all of us need to experience that stirring into flame fanning into flame the graces that we have received because only then we live our christian life in its fullness and if there is any apprehension that the renewal is meant only for a few section of elite people not right it's meant for everyone and then you know it should be accepted and the renewal also has to be more open to reach out to everyone and in this i would also say that we need to take the message of of francis very seriously two things that he has been emphasizing to the charismatics one is to promote the life in the spirit seminar which is the initiation retreat some of us call it initiation retreat promote it he told even the priest at the priest international priest retreat organize the life with the spirit seminars in your schools in your parishes in your seminaries and at the catechists and go to the neighborhoods so this is to be promoted from the renewal and then also the baptism in the holy spirit which is a grace meant for everyone so i want to reiterate that this is a grace meant for everyone and the whole church and the, my prayer is that this wish this desire of the holy father for francis that this be a grace for the whole church be fulfilled this is a general concern as the more prominent a person becomes um, in the charismatic renewal movement the less he is available to the common people who needs his service what do you have to say about that yeah there is there is some some truth in what you say the the busier we become uh, you know the less available we become to the people but i think there is another aspect to this when we came together for a prophetic consultation regarding the jubilee in bethlehem that was in november 2013 just um, 160 leaders from all over the world trying to listen to the lord what is the lord asking renewal for the jubilee a powerful prophecy was this i am looking for humble leaders and i am looking for humble catholic charismatic renewal that touched my heart i said the lord is looking for humble ministers of the word of god there is a danger that as we become influential as we become popular as we grow in our leadership there is an element of spiritual pride that sets in within us all of us in ministry in leadership need to constantly remind ourselves that we are meant for the people and we need to remain humble father cantelamesa rightly said about this that the grace flows through us but we are not the generators it comes from the holy spirit too many men women and families are filled with anxiety and weighted down by troubles the entire world longs for peace but where do we find it the unrest in society is an outcome of the lack of peace within families The unrest within families is due to the lack of peace in individual hearts. 
True peace can be found only in Christ. Shalom World embraces and shares the peace of Christ to individuals and families by broadcasting programs that reach millions of viewers worldwide. Being faithful to the Catholic Church, Shalom World will communicate the truth, goodness, and beauty of life with Christ and His Church. Shalom World brings to the forefront missionary activities from across the globe, encouraging and inspiring viewers to support the missions. The programs highlight the many rites, ministries, and movements within the Catholic Church, recognizing the unity and diversity that makes us one body in Christ. Shalom World broadcasts programs which highlight the charisms of the Holy Spirit at work in a multitude of different ministries and church organizations. Shalom World is a family channel broadcasting a wide range of programming, exploring the Catholic faith for all ages. First commercial free Catholic charismatic channel. Faith-filled, virtue-building, character-based, family-friendly television with Shalom. Be strengthening the faith of so many people in our homes. I want to give my blessing to, uh, to the work and labors and activities of uh, Shalom. Through this media, we will be able to continue to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To promote the gift of church teaching to all of us who are young at heart. A Catholic media ministry that has made wonderful contributions to the church over the past 10 years. Dedicated for the new evangelization and address to the young people. And God's blessings on your work. May God bless and prosper. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The broadcast ministry that prays for its viewers. Shalom world. God's own channel.